you guys. <laughs> oh, you guys. Whew. I just did a full 45 minute ride with my soul sister friends. Woo. You guys, do you know what today is? Today is seven days before my birthday. Seven days before my 49th birthday. <laughs> I, I didn't think I was gonna see 49. And I didn't think I was gonna be able to do this. I dreamt about it. And I've trained for it every day and I've thought about it and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And this whole week I'm gonna share with you guys gratitudes. Fucking gratitude. Wow. The things that I'm just so incredibly grateful to still be here and share with you. And for those of you that are just popping in real quick and you just want to see how I'm doing, I'm, just, I'm fucking doing glorious. I am doing glorious. And I will, I will cut to the chase. I am here, I'm celebrating my two year cancer anniversary. I'm celebrating my birthday. And it is not a miracle that I am here. It is a product of science. It's because of science that I'm here today. And I want you to celebrate with me. I want you to celebrate for me. And I'm gonna ask you to make a donation. And I'm gonna miss to this research cancer fund. For those of you that are gonna stick around, you've got time to get a cup of coffee, because I wanna share a story with you about my friend Dana, and a story about Dr. Dana Hayden, the woman that saved my life. And she saved my life, not through peer errors and a fucking miracle. She saved my life through science. And I always say that I will stay alive if I, if I can just keep up with the science, it will keep me alive. But they need funding, people. They need funding. So please, celebrate my birthday with me. Celebrate that I'm fucking here. And send them some money. Doesn't matter how much. Just send them a little bit of money because we need that science. I need it to stay alive. It literally is the only thing keeping me alive right now. My body's railing, you see this? But it's a trial drug that's keeping my blood going. It's a trial chemo drug that's gonna keep this cancer from taking me away. I need the science. So for those of you that are just popping in, that's my ask. Celebrate me with some funds. And if you don't have funds, that's totally okay. Stick around, grab a cup of coffee, grab tea, because I'm gonna tell you the most beautiful story about why I'm still alive and celebrate. Oh, thank you. Thank you for staying with me and joining me for my gratitude storytelling time. I had to take a moment, take a little shower. It was uh, more emotional than I expected. It was really, really awesome to be able to ride my bike for, and not just ride my bike, you guys. I mean, I was strong. Look at this. That's me crushing it. I mean, I wasn't just holding on for the next song to get through or minute by minute. I was, I was just in it. I was in the music. I was dancing and I did the entire 45 minute session. Oh. It was, it was 
was very emotional because it was really, really awesome. Oh, we'll talk more uh, about the charity drive at the end. Um, I'll give you some more. There'll be information in the description. Uh, I'll share a link with you. The gist of it is uh, Dr. Dana Hayden, who is the woman who saved my life, runs uh, a charity drive for her research fund every year at this time. She usually does a charity ride. You know, you pay a little money, you get to, get to go for a really fancy uh, ride and feel love and joy and all of that stuff, but we're in a pandemic, people. And so, you know, she's she's trying to figure out something on Zoom or whatever, but the link I'm gonna give you, it doesn't matter. If you wanna celebrate with me, for me, if you wanna celebrate science, then just jump into that link, make a donation. Okay, it's story time. The reason I wanna tell you this one, because it's, it has to do with Dr. Dana Hayden, the woman who saved my life. Uh, but I think it's also a story of, it's a story of why we should, we should talk to, to strangers, uh, why we should say hello to our neighbor, um, and, and the power of, of <sighs> life unfolds as it should, you know, sometimes good, sometimes we don't understand, but in this case, it's good. Yeah. So a few years back, my wife asked me to please join her on uh, Saturday mornings. Join her on Saturday mornings for a spin class. Come on, babe, it'll be a couple's thing. We can go to uh, uh, work out and then we can go to the bookstore, go get some coffee or something like that. It'll be a fun way for us to spend the morning. I don't like spin classes. <laughs> <laughs> I love riding my bike. I love riding my bike with a passion outside. I, I tried, I tried several spin classes. I just don't, I don't like the metrics. I don't like the numbers and the competition. And I, I really, really enjoy riding my bike. And I didn't want it to become something I didn't like. And so, but I said, yes, cause it's my life. And of course I want to spend time with her. So she takes me to this class and uh, you guys, it was great. I walked into this room and uh, the lights go down and the music starts thumping like you're in a club. And <laughs> I mean, it was a 45 minute class that you're on the ground uh, at the end. It is a incredible workout, but it's done with just like when you rage and smashing on and then dancing and it's just so joyful. I really got into it. I did. And then so I started to go on my own and I started to find my own classes. And uh, I found a, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> my dog has been inside too long. She's probably wondering, looking at who's out there. Anyways, I went into this class and I uh, loved it so much that I found a class that I wanted to go to. It was the rooster ride. <laughs> yes, people. It was me getting out of bed at 4, 4.30 in the morning to go to this class. Yes, I loved it. I used to ride my bike to work. So this was, you know, a, a way to be able to, to get that feeling and that joy and the, the everything from, from riding, but safely inside. <laughs> and so I went and not only did I enjoy this class and I really, really got into it. I'm telling you, I started to go like every day and believe me, I am not a class person, gym person. I love long walks. I love hiking. I love outdoor things, right? Physical outdoor things. But then I just, this was, this was great, right? So I was doing this in the mornings and I was dancing Bali at night. I had a wonderful time. Well, the thing about this morning class is, can, just imagine who goes to this morning class. Who goes to a class at five o'clock in the morning? People that got shit to do, right? And I ended up meeting this just wonderful uh, women, this group of women, not only in the rooster class, but uh, I used to go on Saturdays and it was just, just, just this wonderful, uh, and, and I keep saying that it was women because primarily it was women in these classes. Um, sometimes dudes would show up and uh, they got their ass kicked and couldn't hang, so they had to go. 
So the, all these gorgeous, wonderful women. And we uh, would, you know, drag our butts into this class and afterwards we would be talking and we would be um, just getting ready for life and, and laughing and joking in the locker room and such. And, and I spent a couple of years uh, uh, with these women warriors, spike warriors, right? Um, gosh, thank goodness. Thank goodness that I, I talked to these women because this, this, it's incredible. I'm going to fast forward to, I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed on a Thursday. I got to be honest, there's not much I remember about that day. The world, uh, the world cracked open that day. But I do know that I called a friend. I called a friend uh, to share that I had stage four cancer and to ask if she would be around uh, the next day because my wife was flying back from New York and she, you wanna say hi? Come here and say hi. Oh, My wife was flying back from New York and uh, so she wasn't home yet. I don't remember anything else about that conversation, but I hung up the phone. And uh, the next morning, my wife was home, I told her, and the next morning, this friend calls back. This friend, mind you, is one of the women that I met in uh, Saturday mornings. And uh, she asked me, have you called Dana? I said, what? She said, have you called Dana? Heather, why would I call Dana? I don't I, what? And she said, Nicole, you need to call Dana. You need to call up, hang up the phone and you need to call Dana. What? Gabby takes the phone. Heather tells her, Gabby, call Dana. She's the chief of colorectal surgery at Rush University. <laughs> Well, all I knew was this wonderful, funny, loving, shy uh, woman uh, that I met riding this bike. And thank God I said hello to her. And, and I made it, you know, that I wasn't shy, that I wasn't uh, too sh in my own shit because we called our friend Dana and uh, she asked me a few questions and she said, I'm going to take, I'm going to take your case to our tumor board or tumor board next week. And we're going to discuss it. Got you. Okay. I'm like, okay. And mind you, I've actually already had conversations with, with other uh, doctors and all I was hearing was inoperable and <sighs> palliative care and hospice and such. Well, I asked my friend Dana, in the meantime, was there some a thing as a transfusion therapy? And she said, tell me more. And I said, uh, Dana, I can't, I, I, I can't sit up, I can't stand. This is a woman who knew me as skipping my way in at five o'clock in the morning to ride a bike and then go off into the day. Hmm. So she admitted me to the hospital that day. The next morning, they took me in for a CT scan. And I'm really in a fog, not just because of the information. I also had a really low hemoglobin, 5.1, so I had no oxygen in my blood. So I couldn't think. I remember laying in this room, and it was in this like waiting room area. And uh, not, not a waiting room, but like where they, they wait you in a bed uh, to go in for CT scans or surgeries or stuff like that. I've been in them a lot now. There's a curtain around me and it's super quiet. And, and then all of a sudden I hear these boots. And I hear this woman's voice. I've been looking for her everywhere. I'm looking for this patient. I hear she's here. And I look under the curtain and I see these boots. <laughs> and I recognize the boots because I had watched my friend Dana pulling those boots on after class while we were uh, getting dressed, you know, chatting and stuff. And, uh, God, what it feels like to, to have another a caring human being that knew you at that moment. Whew. Well, my friend Dana came walking over to, 
to my bed and my friend Dana asked me how I was. And then, uh, and then she introduced me to Dr. Dana Hayden. And Dr. Dana Hayden proceeded to tell me about uh, what she had seen on the CT scan and my tumor and that she disagreed with the other surgeons and she felt that she absolutely could remove the tumor from my body and she could do it successfully and completely and uh, I asked her about my liver and she said it's complicated. It's more complicated than we would hope but it just means it's complicated. <sighs> Later that week, Dr. Dana Hayden took me into surgery, a surgery that I had been told wasn't possible. A surgery that lasted, I don't even know, 10 hours, 15 hours, it was some, yeah. The thing is, she did this surgery, like, like I have a scar on my stomach for my appendix, like this freaking big from, you know, when I was a kid. I have a scar from her. I can't even find where she did the surgery. She poked little holes and she went in there with this like robotics thing. It's like she was playing a video game and took this tumor out of my body completely. My entire colon was clean by the time she was done to a tumor that everyone else said was inoperable. I would have thought, I expected to come out with a colostomy bag. And then I would have been grateful for that. <sighs> but this woman went in and cleaned me out completely. And let me tell you something, if she did not make that decision to take me into that surgery, right then and there, I would not be alive today. I believe that because you don't understand the cancer was eating my blood. They, they couldn't keep me propped up. Within two weeks, I couldn't walk. I couldn't not, I couldn't think. And I couldn't go to chemo. I was not well enough to go to chemo. Even after the surgery, they took the tumor out and I had to wait four weeks to go to chemo. And the day I was clear, they took me into chemo in a wheelchair, in laying down in, I wouldn't have made it. She did this because of science. She did this because of research. She did this because of some fancy fucking tool that she, like, I don't even understand how she did this. It's so high tech and amazing. I always say people, I will stay alive if I can stay alive long enough to keep up with the science. Like I said, I have a beautiful trial drug that's keeping my platelets, keeping my blood up. I'm about to start a trial drug the chemo that is supposed to be miraculous. It's supposed to like take, like tumors gone, lesions gone. Who knows? But because of science, the thing is, is my wonderful friend that called me that day and told me to call Dana. I met her because, because I wasn't in my own shit and, and I smiled at someone and took a chance. It's the beauty of humanity. It's the beauty of us doing this together. And I met this wonderful woman who turned out to be a rock star, badass motherfucking surgeon. And she saved my life. The liver surgery that I had, the, 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 the residents for my liver surgeon, when they were talking about the liver surgery, they were so like, oh my God, <laughs> they, their eyes were popping, talking about how he took the, the lead. They'd never done this before. The dude's like, like one of a, of a handful in the world that can perform the surgeries that I've had. And they did this through science. <sighs> it's amazing. And so, yeah, I, it's my birthday this week. It's my birthday. I'm going to be 49. Mm, I never thought I would be so excited to see 49, which means I'm so close to 50. But I need the science.
I need the science to keep me alive. And so, like I said, Dr. Dana is trying to, if you, if you make a donation, if you jump into that link and, and you make a donation before March, it, $50 or, or more, you, you will be rewarded with a ride. What I'm asking you is just jump into this link and just make a donation. Make it, celebrate me, celebrate for me, celebrate science. And if you don't have the funds, I, it is okay. It is crazy times right now. And that is okay. You're here and I appreciate that so much. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate the generosity of your time supporting me, praying for me. Please keep those prayers coming. I don't know what happened. I don't know what all the answers in this world, so I'll take it all. Thank you so much. Let's raise the roof, people. I just want to raise the roof. I want to make so much money for this woman who saved my life. <laughs> Thank you for staying till the end. That was very kind of you. Thank you for staying for story time. I am grateful for Dr. Dana Hayden. I am grateful for the science. And I am grateful to be turning 49 years old. <laughs>